Hello everyone, it's Nick here, thanks for joining me. If you've ever seen us at an event or been involved with us through video production, you'll know that we use and love our Sennheiser EW100 G3 series wireless audio package. That's a lot of letters and numbers there. It's essentially a wireless transmitter and receiver for your audio. Now this isn't actually a review or look into the specific benefits of investing into a wireless audio system like this. That's actually for another video because they are fantastic systems to invest into. What I wanted to give you an idea, an overview on, is actually how these systems work because there has been a bit of a, a change in regards to Australia uh, with how frequencies work and the kind of frequencies you can use for these wireless packages. So essentially the way that they work is, is acting like mini radios, but they're just one way. You've got a transmitter which takes the signal from the microphone that I've got on, the lavalier microphone, plugs into the transmitter, clips on via a nice little body uh, uh, belt clip, sends the signal via radio transmission to a receiver which plugs into the camera. So you can see actually, again, even though I said I wouldn't talk really about the benefits, it's, it's great to be untethered from the camera, and especially if you're actually maybe covering an event or you've got a colleague giving a presentation at a seminar. This is going to be a great way to capture really good audio, even though they're going to be moving around and um, you know, perhaps on stage or in a workshop environment. So they're great. Now, because they use radio frequencies, whilst you don't need to know how radio frequencies actually work. You do need to really have an understanding as to how to choose the best frequency to use. A poor frequency choice will basically give you hiss and distortion. It's kind of like listening to FM radio. You're driving along and then all of a sudden you hit a tunnel. Well, if the transmission can't get through that tunnel, you're, you're going to be picking up a lot of static and a lot of hiss. And that's exactly the same for these wireless radio devices. Now, the reason why this is important is because at the start of the year, 1st of January 2015, the Australian government changed the available frequencies for public use. So essentially you've got more people competing for what is a smaller range of available frequencies. Now, don't worry, this doesn't mean you have to get uber uber technical and become an audio technician so that every time you pull out these devices you know exactly what to do to record. These devices literally set, set themselves up and I'll show you that in just a moment. But I wanted to show you a couple of ways that you know that every time you actually use these devices that you can actually make sure that the frequency you're picking is the cleanest to ensure that you get the best signal possible for your audio and you reduce the chance of any hiss or interference. So the first thing I want to do, I'll actually get my, my phone. First thing I want to do is I actually have a phone here which uh, I'll be able to pull up the um, screen. Is I'm going to navigate to frequencyfinder.com.au now Frequency Finder is a little service that Sennheiser themselves have put together to allow those using wireless packages to know the range of frequencies available so that they know can start to hone into the uh, frequency to use for the video that they're actually making. Now for example, if you're located in an office or you're doing some home video and using this system, and you only ever use it at home, well if you're already getting a nice clean signal you might not have to pull this device out and look at this uh, information each and every time. But if you're actually based in an office and again using the example of a colleague giving a presentation, maybe even in another city, well those range of frequencies available and therefore the, the frequency you have used previously might actually change. This uh, aid essentially enables you to actually get an idea on whether the frequencies are going to differ too much from city to city or area to area. How to use the, uh, the app aid is very, very easy. It's not an app, it should be an app, but it's just a website for now, but you can use it on mobile and desktop. 
is you've got four options. You can enter your address, you can even use latitude and longitude if you really want to get technical. Uh, you can use GPS and it uses your location to pick where you are, or you can literally drop a pin on a map. Um, so just as an example, I'm going to go into uh, Brisbane, so we'll just wait for the map to load up here. And because we're based in Brisbane, I'll just drop a pin near Brisbane and use location. Now, as you can see, it gives me a uh, range of areas and they're ranked based on their suitability to the location I've just picked. As I've mentioned, we're Brisbane based, so let's actually have a look at the range of frequencies available if we're using Sennheiser systems. Now, I can choose from four Sennheiser wireless systems. Now, I have, and the device we're talking about today is the G3 series, so it's the EW100 G3 series, also known as the Evolution series. By picking Evolution series, and I can click down, drop down to recommended frequencies for today, you can actually see I'm presented with a range of frequencies that start at 174 megahertz and go up to 694 megahertz. What that means? I don't really know, it's just a range of frequency. You can see all the ones with the green arrow are the thing, the, the, the range or a frequency I can pick within that range that it's going to be available. Now it doesn't mean that someone else isn't already using a specific frequency in that range. It just means that this is the range available for the device we're using and in the area we are using it. On the right hand side on the, the third column or fourth column there, you'll see A band, G band and B band. The G3 wireless series is actually manufactured to have three, three uh, essential types of the G3 so that dependent on where you are in the world and therefore the frequencies available for, to you, you might get the G3B series, the G3A series, or the G3G series uh, or G band series. As you can see, I'm in Brisbane and regardless of which type of G3 um, package I have, I'm going to be able to f at least find an available frequency for me. If I were actually to go back, go home, and locate on map, if I were to say be at an event in Melbourne, Again, pick my Evolution G3, recommended frequencies for today. So you can see there's actually a difference in the frequencies that are actually available for public use. But notice I've still got choices for my A band, my G band, and my B band. So regardless of the type that I've picked, I can use it in Brisbane and I know I'll be able to find a clear frequency, or you can use it in Melbourne and I know I'll be able to find a clear frequency. There was, you know, there, well, there has been a big concern with people who have already invested into these, this wireless system, the Sennheiser system, that, oh no, I'm going to have to, effectively my wireless package is now useless, or I have to sell it on for a much lower cost because it can't really be used, and I have to invest in another kind of system. Not so. So you can use the frequency finder so that if you're going to a location, you know the range of frequency that you can use. Now once you know that, you can simply pick the relevant frequency to use on your Sennheiser G3. Now, I would actually always suggest never to manually pick a frequency. If you are, whether you're, um, it's been a few weeks or a few months since you've recorded or you are moving to a new area, the best thing to do is actually let this Sennheiser package set up the range of frequencies available for you. To do that is very simple. You simply navigate into the menu by pressing the set button, navigating down to easy setup. Now we've got a current list already scanned, but if I go down and then I can go scan new list. What this is now doing is this device is scanning all the frequencies uh, in the range it can actually pick up. 
and it's going to give me choices in regards to the kind of bands that it can pick up. It's going to give me the best choices available. It can take a couple of minutes, but obviously if this is part of your setup process before you actually film your video, then you know that you're going to be getting the cleanest signal possible. And as always, you should be monitoring your audio if you can. And if you can't listen to the uh, audio, or if you're doing a piece of camera and it's just yourself, record a test, play it back, and make sure that you've got the audio setup working for you. Once it's done, you'll actually see that it will give me a range of banks, pre-programmable frequency ranges, essentially, and tell me how many available frequencies are in that bank. So bank one, I've actually got 12 frequencies free. If I scroll through and bank 20, there's 12, 19, there's 11, 18, there's 12. I can actually pick the bank I'd like to use and therefore the frequency that is strongest. So I'm going to go back to, I think I'm just going to stick with bank 20. And I can go up and down and it's already pre-programmed in available frequencies for me. Pick the one I want, it already knows that it's a clear frequency. I exit. And all I need to do is make sure my transmitter unit is on. This is my receiver unit. I open up the uh, battery uh, slide. I hold them fairly close together and they've got little infrared panels and I hit sync and I let them talk to each other. And a little tick tells me I'm synced. I now have this set up as easy as clicking really a few buttons and it knows it's got as clean a frequency as possible. Now, as I mentioned, occasionally there are going to be instances where you can't control if a broadcast fan from a TV station rolls past and is interfering with your signal. That might happen. But by taking these steps to prepare and know exactly the environment you're going to be recording in and therefore the available frequencies that you can use in this environment and whether your system will work when you locate to a new environment, you know that you're going to get the best audio possible. So that's it, a probably not so quick tip, but hopefully giving you a better idea into how these systems actually work in the first place and hopefully show you that it's not that difficult to buy into a professional system like this to maintain what is essentially some professional sounding audio. Thanks. Thank you.